the uh, conference basically is talking about uh, family and reconnecting, rediscovering that we were once all part of the same family. I would just like to take a moment out to speak about the value of family. How does uh, Judaism view family? Because family is the communicator of, uh, of our traditions. Family is that instrument that unites. It's much more than just faith. It's much more than just tradition. Family is the bond that enables one generation to transmit values, ideas, faith to the next generation. When we talk about people connecting to family, 500 years ago, preservation of family becomes a compelling uh, impetus for Jews. Mipsacha lotitalem, do not you cannot hide from your family. You have to support them, you have to be with them. And so when we're talking about the different personal stories that we're going to soon hear, we're talking about people that have had the opportunity to search, to discover, and to connect in some way. And some people will connect in a way that they will, again, adopt Judaism. Others in different ways. So uh, first we have uh, Fabio Francioli Fonseca. He was born in San Rafael in a small city in the outskirts of the Cerrito region in the northeast uh, region of Brazil. He serves as a federal agent of the Federal Police Department in Brazil for about 20 years. He served there and at a very young age he felt a spiritual connection to Israel and by the age of 18 felt an inner certainty that he is a Jew. He slowly discovered that his family practiced many traditions associated with Judaism, and he's here to relate to, relate to you his, uh, his story. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here and can have the opportunity to share with you all a little bit about my story. But when I was invited to come here by my friend Avi Gross, I've stayed in my room thinking, in what is my story more special than any other people that I met during all these years? Nothing. And that's why I'm here not only to tell my story, but to bring on my shoulders also the story of the many other Binayanos in, in Brazil and I do believe in the world. I can say that is a calling of the soul, a calling of the Jewish soul, because there is no a reasonable reason for you feel what you feel. And you feel. But how this awake start? A special aunt, aunt of mine gave me a Bible. And every time she used to meet me, Fabio, did you read the Bible? I said, yes, I did. So tell me something about, she's evangelical. I used to tell about the David, Shlomo, Moshe, no, Fabio, the new one is more important. I say, oh, but I like the old one. <laughs> the old one is more interesting, at least to me. I always had such feel inside me for everything related to Israel was special. When I was 12 years old, someone, I don't remember who, when and how. But I remember that I was very curious boy about my story, about my family. And someone said, oh, you are from Fonseca. Ah, Fonseca from Rio Grande do Norte. Oh, they, they are descendant of Jews. So one day, when I was 16 to 17 years, years old, I was walking the town of my city I was walking the streets and I saw a guy with a big back. By the way, 
he's over there today. He's a brother of mine. His name is Ariel Katz. <laughs> and you exchange the addresses, and you start talking, and he sent me tapes. Singers like Nurit Gauron, Shlomo Atzi, Ehud Banai, Mashina, was part of me. But I was fed with that hungry, this, this starving necessity of be fed for everything related to Israel. I was, when I was 18 years old, I was Israeli. I was a Jew. Inside my soul, I was, I loved so much. How can I explain this? Until when one day I read an article in a very important magazine in Brazil named Veja. And the headline was, The Return to the Synagogues. Of course, they called me attention. And there are some surnames. And my name was there, Fonseca. Is it really possible? Is it really possible? According to my, my family, they don't eat a pork meat. They don't eat meat with blood. And they used to marry each other. In the house of my great-grandmother, she used to light the candles on Friday night, make her praise, and she didn't allow nobody to do nothing at home. Wash the dish, clean the house, wash clothes, nothing until the sunset on Saturday. Now I understand and why I feel this. <sighs> to me, I was okay. Was, I could have an answer. I'm not just a Jew by the soul, but a Jew also by the blood. So I said, though, I need to talk, I need to knock on the, my people's door. And that's what I did. At that time, already, there was internet. <laughs> And I make a research, I could find telephones. And uh, I discovered a telephone of a community from Natal. And there I discovered Mr. João Medeiros, who works like a rabbi today, a person that I love so much. And that old man started to talk to me the first letters in Hebrew and start to introduce me to my, our religion. Then, my friend uh, Avi Gross, he invited me to go to Israel. And I did. And when I was about to arrive in the airport and I could see the lights, Happiness, joy. I made Aliyah Torah. So special. So symbolic. So important to me. I did it. And arrive in Jerusalem and go to the Kotel and put your hands in that smooth rocks to me, in my soul. I had the searching in that moment that was coming a cycle in my life. I left Israel with a part of me there. It's still there. But I came here with my heart open. We are part of these people, part of this untold history. And we felt the desire of return home. This desire appears like a rose that flourish in the desert. But I must remind you all that it's impossible something flourish without a seed. So if it's flourished, that was because there was a seed. 
And this seed is what we can call Nefesh Yehudi. That despite we can't see it, it links us somehow all the Jews of the world. I do believe that bring back home lost brothers must be by a mitzvah. And it's believing on this that I finish my speak with my heart full of hopeness. Thank you.